In this problem, I'm asked for the Maclaurin series for the cosine function. So this is a power series centered at zero. And just a real quick reminder of the theory here. The whole idea of a Maclaurin series was to propose that any well-behaved function can be written as a polynomial expansion, provided that we're able to keep infinitely many terms in the expansion. It took a derivative trick to figure out how to get those coefficients, and I'll post a link to that real quick. And the way it turned out was you can find those c's, the coefficients of the polynomial expansion, by taking the nth derivative of our function, evaluating it at zero, and dividing by n factorial. Once you're done doing that, you can express any well-behaved function as an infinite series. So I'm going to start out by organizing myself and just creating a list of the first several derivatives of the cosine function. And then I'll evaluate all those at zero, divide by the appropriate factor, and I should be able to find an infinite series for the cosine function. All right, I've got my first few derivatives done. This is straightforward. The derivative of sine is cosine. Derivative of cosine is negative sine. I'm on the fourth derivative now. I'm going to go all the way to six so I can be really sure to see the pattern. All right, then I have to evaluate all these at zero. So f of zero is one because the cosine of zero is one. f prime of zero is zero because the sine of zero is zero. f double prime of zero is negative one and so on. All right, so I'm seeing a nice alternating pattern here. And now I have to get the c's. So c0 is going to be f of 0 over 0 factorial, but 0 factorial is 1. c1 vanishes. c2 is going to be negative 1 over 2 factorial. c3 vanishes. c4 is going to be 1 over 4 factorial c5 vanishes, c6 is negative 1 over 6 factorial. And the pattern continues. So when I write the cosine function in expanded form, it looks like 1. And then all the odd terms vanish. c2 is negative 1 over 2 factorial, so I have negative x squared over 2 factorial. And I have a plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial, minus x to the 6th over 6 factorial, plus dot, dot, dot. And if I want to write that in summation notation, as the sum as n goes from 0 to infinity, I need this to start out with a positive number. So I'm going to say negative 1 to the n. So when I plug in 0, I get a positive start. And then I'll get a minus sign on the n equals 1 term, and so on. I only want even powers of x, so I'm going to use a 2n for that. When I plug in 0, I get x to the 0, which is 1. When I plug in n equals 1, I get x squared. n equals 2 gives me x to the 4th, and so on. All divided by that same even number factorial. Okay, those are infinite series representation of the cosine function. And next, we're asked to verify that the interval of convergence is negative infinity to infinity. So we're going to use the ratio test for this. And we look at the limit as n goes to infinity of the absolute value of the n plus 1 term over the nth term. And when that's less than 1, we're going to have a convergent series. When I take the absolute value, the negative 1 to the n doesn't matter, so I'm not going to write those. And my n plus 1 term looks like that. And then I divide by the nth term, which is the same as multiplying by the reciprocal of it. So I get a 2n factorial in the numerator, x to the 2n in the denominator. So in my numerator, x to the 2 times quantity n plus 1 is x to the 2n plus 2. And then I have a 2n factorial stuck to that. Same thing with my factorial in the denominator. It's 2n plus 2 all factorial. x to the 2n. And up there in the numerator, I could split off an x squared off of this piece and call it x squared times x to the 2n. And the x to the 2n's would cancel, so I'm just going to take care of that right now. And I'm going to use a standard trick on the factorial in the denominator. I'm going to split off the first factor, 2n plus 2, the second factor, 
2n plus 1 and then leave the rest alone which gives me 2n factorial and the point of course is that I can now cancel that factorial in the next step I'm going to use the fact that x is a constant in the n limit so I'm going to pull the absolute value of x squared out in front and the absolute value of x squared is the same thing as x squared but what about that limit? So this limit unambiguously goes to zero because it has ands in the denominator and a constant in the numerator. So I have x squared times zero, which is equal to zero. And this is always less than one, no matter what x is. So our ratio test doesn't put any restrictions on x whatsoever. No matter what x is, I pass the ratio test for convergence. And that means our interval of convergence is negative infinity to infinity. In other words, the series converges for all real values of x. So that's pretty cool. We can represent the cosine function now as an infinite series expansion, and it works no matter what x is.